our Tula Pink Butterfly Quilt at the Texas Quilt Barn. I'm so excited. This is month four and we got some awesome, awesome blocks that we're going to make. We're gonna do some stripes. We're gonna do a new block called Intersection, which I think you'll kind of recognize. We're gonna do a chunky cross. We're gonna do some half square triangles and some log cabin blocks. I think you are going to love it. It's going to be beautiful. And when we're done, you will have this. You will have all of this. We'll even work on getting it all sewn together. So you have all four sections sewn together. It's gonna be fun. So if you're ready, I am. Let's get started. The first block we're going to work on today is the intersection block. And the intersection block is um, just what it says. It basically is, to me, it's like a road. Like this is the road and it got, it has a cross uh, road, cross street as well. So, um, and those are broken up into two sides. So the intersection block is kind of cool. Let me put my arm in here. I'm gonna slide these pieces in because this is what it's gonna look like when, uh, let me move that down a little bit, when we add the intersection block. We're gonna do four small um, log cabins and they're, they're small only because they only have the uh, three pieces to them. And then we have the um, blossom fabric there. And so this is what you, we're gonna do, a uh, small log cabin here, then we'll do a second one, a third one down here in the bottom left, and then a fourth one right here. And then when we put the whole thing together, we'll piece it uh, so that um, we have the four log cabins with the uh, cornerstones always facing uh, out in the, uh, in the uppermost corners or bottommost corners. And then that'll be our intersection block. It is not a hard make. So let's go and let's go to the sewing machine and get this going. So now we're ready to get started um, putting together our first small log cabin for the intersection block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cornerstone fabric, I'll flip it over on top of my piece of fabric, the very first one that I'm gonna add, um, add to, line everything up, and um, just like I always remind you in previous um, sections, we are using, I'm using RFL 2600 Dove, and I am um, also using a 2.5 stitch length. Okay. I'm using an accurate quarter inch seam. And here we go. Okay. And as you're working, if you, if you so choose, definitely, you know, get out that Violet Craft seam roller because that's going to help you flatten those seams uh, without, without having to uh, get up and get to your pressing station. But you do what makes you feel happy and makes you, makes you most productive. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add my next piece. So I'll or, orient my fabric to the right. I'll move my next piece below it and then I'll flip my fabric down. Okay. Interesting thing as I was working on this, uh, you know, preparing for our project today was um, that uh, I was looking at this and I was thinking, oh yeah, we're making two intersection blocks, one for each section. And then I was like, okay, and that means we need four small um, log cabins. I'm like, nope, not four. We actually are going to need eight. So be sure that you multiply when you're cutting, you multiply and get the right number of um, pieces of fabric because it kind of stinks when you get ready to get ready to do it and then find out, oh yeah, um, I actually needed more. We're doing, we're doing eight small log cabins as opposed to the four that we were doing before. So just something to think about, um, be prepared for. It all will work out. And today is kind of exciting because we're going to be able to add um, when we sew section three to section four, and then we're going to be able to put the whole thing together, uh, one, two, section one and two to three and four. Okay, so here I've got my piece, okay, and um, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over onto my next piece. Hard to believe, but we are almost done with this. The, the reason um, this one goes faster, I think, is because the pieces are so much larger which is a benefit to us because it goes a little faster too. So make sure I get everything lined up like I need it to be. I got one more piece to add and we'll be done. 
good. And since we're making two of these, um, we only need, like I said, eight intersection blocks. Okay. That one's like that. And now I have this piece, and all I'm going to do is flip it down. And once it's flipped down, I'll sew this one on. And then um, once we're done, we'll go and press all these seams open at our, at our iron just to make sure everything lays super flat and that you're happy with it. We'll be doing quite a few uh, log cabins today, actually, because we're gonna do, in a few minutes, we're gonna do, um, after we finish the intersection block, we have two small log cabins done in two different colorways. So a total of four more log cabins to do. Pretty awesome. Okay. So now I am done with this one. And when I open it up, I will go and uh, press all those seams open and then we'll lay it out over at the, um, at the table. So let's see how it goes. Okay, now it's time for us to go ahead and make our intersection. So um, we've got the, the road running this way and we have our side streets running this way, which looks great. And now we're gonna take the blocks that we made and we're gonna lay them with the cornerstone in the uppermost right and then rotate it in the uppermost left. And then we're gonna come down and do the bottom Okay, and they're all going to be, the cornerstones are all going to be facing out, and that'll be super important. Um, I do want to mention um, uh, that you take a few minutes and square up your uh, small log cabins based on the measurements that I provided to you in your supplemental guide, because that'll really help your um, intersection block come together beautifully, because you don't want anything where it's not aligned because you work so hard to make this happen. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the sewing machine and um, we're going to take, I'm gonna, we're going to sew these two halves. So I'm going to slip this out for just a second and we'll slip, we're going to sew, flip and sew the first cornerstone block to the side street. I'm sure that's not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and then we'll flip and we'll sew this one and we'll repeat the thing, repeat it on this side as well. And then just making sure that as you're doing it, that your cornerstone blocks are lined up on the outside um, because when we come to sew it together, we don't want one that's inadvertently flipped the wrong, direc the wrong direction. So just be sure that you are um, sewing it. And um, let's go back and take care of that and then we'll see what that looks like and then how we add the intersection. Because once we've got these six pieces sewn together, all we're gonna do then because then we'll have a, a long unit, a 10 and a half inch unit, another 10 and a half inch unit, and we'll sew to either side. So let's go make that happen. As I'm getting ready to sew, I want to make sure that I have my pieces laid out correctly. So I'm just going to kind of slide these up and make sure that my cornerstone is in the upper right and the lower left, which it is. Okay, so I'm in a good place. I'm going to go ahead and slide my lower left just over to for the second, and I'm going to go ahead and slide uh, my side street, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Also, my side street, I'm just going to flip it up on top of my small log cabin, and then I'm going to be ready to, um, well, there we go. Make sure everything's lined up. Looks great. Looking good. Trying to make sure my seams stay as straight as I can make them. You know, we I always talk to you every month about staying strong, make, making sure you're. Um, Seems to stay straight, so that looks pretty great. Okay, now that I've got that one, oh, I got a piece of fuzz there. Okay, now I'm, I can go press the seam or I can just go ahead and attach this just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead because the, the, the outer block is the same side as the outer block, so they, they line up on the right hand side. And now I'm going to flip the log cabin back on top of that side street. And the reason, and you probably know the answer, is because I have a seam right there. And I want to make sure that my seam is up so that I can make sure that I don't accidentally, um, you know, flip a seam or something. That would be really tragic. Okay, make sure 
everything's lined up like I need it to be. Looking good. Looks great. Okay. Now that right hand side of my intersection block is complete. Now let's do the left hand side. Okay, I'll scooch that over to the side. Okay, and the left hand side, remember I had the block in the upper left hand corner, and then I had, let's see, this one got turned a little bit, so this one needs to go in the bottom left hand corner, top left, bottom left. Okay, and then I have my side street right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll move my, uh, my left bottom one over for just a second. I'm gonna flip my top block over on top of my side street of that very cute little intersection that we're making. Couple threads off. It's always important to get it as lined up as I can get it to be. And then down here, looking good. Looks great. side side street okay there's the upper left that looks great now I'm gonna bring my other piece in and it'll be the lower left flip it over and this time I don't have to worry about which side is on top but I may as well make the smaller piece on top that makes it just super simple that quarter inch seam okay and then I'll go press those seams open and we'll go back and we'll get ready to lay this out how does that sound because literally now I've got there's my right hand side my left hand side I put the intersection right in the middle and I'm ready to go looking awesome okay I've got my seams pressed and I've got the, I'm just gonna double check before I start to sew. I've got my four corner blocks in the outer part of the intersection, the side, sewn to the side streets. And now I'm gonna put my main street right down the middle. And I see, that looks pretty great. Okay, so it's, and this is what, this is the layout, right? So what I wanna do now is I have to think about how am I going to sew this together so that I make sure my seams stay open. So I'm gonna slide the left-hand side of my block out of the way, and I'm going to go ahead and flip the um, right-hand side streets over on top of that main street. And I'm gonna just go ahead and, um, Line that up and get ready to go. Look in your supplemental guide while I'm thinking about it. Look in your supplemental guide because there is a note about the blossom fabric that I really want you to pay attention to. Um, a super, super important. So take a look at that when you have a minute or at, it probably as you're reading through the supplemental guide as you're making the, get ready to make your blocks. Okay, I'm going to line up down at the very end just to make sure everything looks good. I kind of just hold it there and I'm going to make sure everything looks good as I, as I approach my first seam. Looking good. as best you can. Okay, let's see how it looks. So that is a 
a nice. Okay, so that's my right hand side looking pretty great. Okay, I can go press that, or I can go ahead and lay the left hand side down, and you can see that the block is uh, in the upper left hand corner. I'm in a good place there, so I'm going to go ahead and flip the left side over on top because I've got seams, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my block around because look, if I do that, check this out. Now the left becomes the right and the right becomes the left. That is so, that's just magical. Just magical. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and line my fabric up and get ready to go for it. Let's see, there it is. Okay, and I'll make sure I'm lined up at the end. Everything lines up down here. We're out of the camera range, you can't see it, but you know what I mean. Line everything up there. Make sure that seam stays flat. If you're uh, afraid of getting your finger in there, be sure you use something, uh, a stiletto or a purple thing or something to make sure you keep your fingers out from underneath that presser foot because you certainly don't want any accidents. Okay. And, and we're done. Ta-da! That was pretty awesome. Okay, after I press it open, our intersection block is complete. Let's go do that. Okay, y'all, these blocks are gorgeous. And they really weren't that hard. It was just a little bit, it looks probably a little more daunting, I think, than it really is, but I'm really proud. Um, before you set these aside um, and get ready to move to your next block, be sure that you do take a minute and square up your block. You wanna square it up based on the uh, dimensions provided in our pattern on page four. So make sure you take care of that before we, uh, before you set it aside, because you certainly, that'll be important as we get ready to put our section together. Okay, great job. Let's keep going. All right, our next block is the stripe block. And we did one of these last month. It is, is certainly not a, a challenge. I mean, I feel like uh, you'll be fine, but um, we're just going to lay our fabrics out and um, then you're going to, so you're going to do uh, the solid and then you're going to do the print and then the solid and the print and the solid and the print. And so um, we are going to go, when we piece this together, I'll put another print down so that you get the idea. A solid and a print, a solid and a print. And when we uh, go to piece these, I'm going to go ahead and chain piece these in pairs. I'm going to do the pairs and then I'll put them all together and uh, press them. But I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna wait on pressing till I, at the very, very end. So let's go do that. Okay, I've got my two fabrics right here and I'm gonna kind of just kind of part them and put them one on each side so that when I get ready to put them together, they will go together beautifully. So I'll take one of each, well, easy for me to say and I'll just pair them up and um, the height of this block is not a challenge it's more the length remember we talked about that last month it's more of a length the length issue but that's okay and that's my first pair and then I'm gonna do my second pair do the best I can to get those edges all lined up. Cutting accurately is so important. It really helps us get the sewing, the piecing and the sewing part done so much better. Don't you think? Okay, that's the second one. And we're gonna do two of these because we'll do one for the right wing and one for the left wing. Okay. What I'm showing you right now are just the pieces for the right wing because then I'll do the left wing 
You don't need to see me piecing all those little pieces together. You got this. Okay, and one more. And then, this will kind of go together pretty fast. I, I think this one is kind of a fun. Wouldn't this, be, wouldn't this be a fun technique if you wanted to make like a striped, you know, a pieced striped border? That would be kind of interesting, right? <laughs> it would take a while to make it, especially if it was a, a large quilt, but it'd still be kind of fun. Okay, take all these and put them aside. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and open up my first piece. And as I grab from my little pile here, I just wanna make sure that I, I, I alternate my fabrics. So solid pattern, solid pattern. So let me flip this one on top. I don't wanna have uh, two patterned pieces next to each other. That would not be the um, what the pattern called for. Solid in a pattern. We got another one here. And, whoops, I'll flip it over. <laughs> I was going to do it with my hand the wrong way. Make sure. Okay, there I go. Flip it over so that the solid. And I think the reason um, I'm choosing, I, I'm not going to think, I know the reason that I'm choosing not to press right now is because I really would like to just do it all at one time. I don't think it really requires that I press between no no seam impacts another seam so I feel like it's okay okay now I didn't get to use that one because it's there's five sets and so I didn't get to use that one but that's okay we'll get there okay now there you go and I'm going to go ahead and add this next one so solid piece it Kind of hold it all back here behind my left hand. And then we have one more piece to add. And my whole first strip for the right side of my butterfly one will be complete. So I have solid pattern, solid pattern, solid pattern. And now I'm going to add my last couple pieces and I make sure that the solid is next to the pattern and uh -oh. didn't quite grab it there okay. whoops sorry I didn't mean to bump the camera Is it correct? Oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? Okay, I'm gonna go take it to the ironing board. I'm gonna press each uh, piece open. I'll start at one end and work my way to the other. And then I'm going to double check my measurements because the height is gonna be the same consistency, but it's the length is what we're concerned about. So um, double check that, the, the measurements are, are in your book and let's take a, let's go press these seams open. Okay, so now here are my two sets of strips. Um, I guess a solid stripes. I mean, it, it looks good. So make sure you do square up your block. Your width should be just fine. Just double check that length because that will make a difference. But uh, that one is ready to go. So go ahead and set that one aside. 
Okay, the next block are two of the same block. So I've got both colorways here. And we're going to be doing the small log cabin, just like we've done in the past. So let's go ahead and, and kind of lay these out so that you know exactly what they look like. So um, the cornerstone always in the upper right hand corner, right? So there's that. And then we're gonna use the solid next to it. So pretty. This is a new, these are new colors for us, right? Because now we're kind of departing from the uh, the orange and pinks, so to speak, and moving more towards the yellow. So how pretty is that? Okay, that's going to be one colorway. That's kind of gorgeous, if you ask me. And then here's the second colorway. Something you're familiar with. Okay, that looks great. Remember, the cornerstone always goes in the upper right-hand corner. And then we have... Our third color of fabric we're going to add in there. Let me scooch these over just slightly. There you go. So you kind of get an idea. And then we're going to be using this piece. Whoops. That piece there and that piece there. And that is our, our two colorways. So um, you'll need two of each for your, um, for your um, butterflies. Two of this more yellow citron colorway and two of this reddish orange yellow <laughs> colorway so it's going to be gorgeous let's go take care of these so we are going to do two of each colorway so i'll go ahead and um, do one of each um, and if you don't need this help then you just fast forward on through this because this is something we've done uh well earlier in this particular uh earlier in this particular uh, quilt today in our tutorial, but also um, in, in many other of, of the videos that we've done before of the three, we've always done these uh, log cabin blocks. So you, if you don't need them, then you just skip on ahead, okay? So there is my um, cornerstone. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it down. And I'll line it up. Take a second to make sure everything looks great. Looking good, looking good. Sometimes I let my speed get away from me. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you? You just think, oh no, I've got, I've got it set today. Not in turtle mode, but I've got it set at a nice, reasonable rate. And then all of a sudden, your foot just kind of goes, what? <laughs> okay. Orient my fabric. I'll get my third piece in. Flip it over and line it up. To some new colorways, so that's going to be exciting for us. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and roll this seam. I know sometimes people, you might be thinking, oh, I can just rush through this, but this is a good opportunity to kind of just, you know, do a little self-check on, you know, making sure your seams look great and um, that you're super happy with the um, size of your seams and that you're straight. I have a friend and she tells me all the time, I can't sew a straight seam to save my life. <laughs> This is a good time to practice that, especially since it's a block that you're so familiar with. It's a great time to, to do that. Practice sewing that, that straight seam. Because we'll be getting to some curves in the next section or two. So you thought we left those behind, but no, we did not. No, we did not. got that one. 
Looking pretty good, right? Only two more pieces to go. And this small log, log cabin is complete. And um, just like before, once you're complete with your log cabins, you do wanna go ahead and make sure that you square them up because you want them to be the accurate size that you need them to be in order to um, uh, piece them together in the, for your quilt. So when, cause you want everything to go together beautifully, just like a little jigsaw puzzle. Oh, nope, that came, that came out there, didn't it? No, ma'am. There we go. I'm gonna start out slow, turtle mode a little bit. That's what my, my grandson calls it turtle mode when he sews on my machine. Not a bad thing to do either. There's okay. that one. And like I said, I'll go press all my seams when I'm done with this. Okay. I'm almost done. This is my fourth colorway, so I should be ready. To... Ooh, look how pretty that is. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, and I'll flip this down because I want to do seam side up. It's kind of tempting, isn't it, to kind of make your smaller piece go on the top just because it's the smaller piece. But don't do it. Don't be tempted. Because then you'll have to unpick some seams to make that seam lay flat. And you don't want to do that. That's, that's never any fun. Yeah, that's getting a little, a little out, of, out of whack for me. Let's see how that goes. Look. Aw, that looks great. Okay, that's the first colorway. Kind of some new fabrics for us. Let's look at some even newer fabrics, okay? So we have got the, we're moving into the yellows now. Get ready, friend. Here we go. We're gonna move, oh, so pretty. So, so pretty. Gotta love them. And I know that um, you think every time it should be um, four different fabrics, but in this particular block, we're using only three fabrics, and we use one of the one of them twice. So double check again, double check your um, supplemental guide because I think that will really help you make sure that you're using the fabrics that you need. old hat at these at these uh, half log these small log cabins aren't you or any log cabin for that matter <laughs> it's like yeah I've done this once or twice okay there's my fabric it's in the upper right hand corner so I'm going to flip this down and let's keep going the fabrics for this particular uh, small log cabin have been are new to us uh, for the first time we're using them uh, today in section four so that's kind of cool it's always fun to see some new fabrics of course I love the ones we've used so far too so that's even even more fun okay so now we're ready to flip over onto that piece only three more pieces to add and you, we will be done. And you'll, like I said, you'll be making two of the um, orangish red, one for each side of your, of your butterfly wing, uh, one for the right, one for the left, and then we'll be doing two of each of this colorway because one for the right and one for the left. And then I'm going to 
flip it down. This yellow and gray is one of those colors that, I mean, I don't see it a lot, but it sure is pretty. When I say see it a lot, I don't mean see it a lot in, in quilts and things, but it is gorgeous. Really loving it. Okay, two more to go. And we're going back to a color that we had already used which is new for us, but we'll be we'll be doing that again in a couple other um, blocks we'll be using. We'll be repeating fabrics when it looks like you should have four fabrics. We're gonna have four fabrics, so it's just gonna repeat uh, two of them twice to make our four fabrics. So you'll see this again. Okay, so now we're gonna take this one and flip it over. Yep. And today we have quite a bit of work ahead of us still. The blocks don't go too, they're going together pretty quickly. I'm, I'm impressed with how fast we're moving along, but what's gonna take some time for us is sewing all of the, sewing section three to section four, which is what we're working on right now. And then once that's done, that'll take us a little bit of time. And then we'll sew section, the section one, two, our original section one, two, to section three, four. So that will be, um, that'll take us a little bit of time today, but that's okay, we're not in any rush. This is good, good for us to be taking our time and enjoying the process. And it's fun. Um, last night, uh, right before I went to bed, I read a comment from a Section 2 video. And someone had written the nicest thing and was just saying this has been a good... There we go, flip it down. She said it's, it's been good to motivate, to uh, get her fabric kit out and start sewing and so much fun to hear that and to or to read that because you know, sometimes all we need is someone to to sew along with or you know be in our corner as we're working through some of these things and it's just kind of fun so it was fun for me last night when I got to read that I was like oh and this is the last seam on this particular block and then I'll go press the seams open and also square them up before I set them aside because that is super, super important. So let's see what it looks like. <gasps> Gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Good job, y'all. Proud of you. Keep it up. Okay. Here they are all pressed out looking beautiful so like i said be sure you square them up so that uh you look at in your directions and you make sure that you square them up based on the measurements provided in our pattern and we're ready to move on to our next block okay. our next block is the chunky cross so this layout is not difficult or challenging but i think we've actually done this once or twice before so we're going to take the large piece and lay it down in the middle take the other two pieces and lay them on the top and the bottom easy and then we're going to lay it um we have some of the smaller pieces that are exactly like that one we're going to lay it top and bottom just like that boom and oops boom and then we have four corner pieces that are going to go right in there So, again, this is one of those ones that I feel like is pretty easy to um, to go ahead and um, chain piece because I, I kind of feel like that would help us um, be efficient with our time. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, come follow me and let's go take, take care of this beautiful, beautiful block. Alrighty, I'm ready to get this chunky cross sewn together. So, this is the center part, right? And these are the side pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip my side piece over on top of that and I'm going to lay that, line that up, and um, also the, the right side. And then I'm going to work on another piece and then also the left side. So that um, it kind of is efficient. piece done. Now I'm going to take, this was the piece, this is the piece that goes at the top of it, and then I have another piece, the, uh, the outer um, piece, so I'm going to go ahead and put those together, right sides together, match everything up. And 
and I'll repeat that with these two pieces. Can see those two pieces at the bottom were a little misaligned so better to stop and make sure everything looks good right now I've got two pieces back here so I'm gonna go ahead and snip those and I've also got my leader ender over here so I can snip that off but I still have one piece that's still kind of underneath my my needle over here let me go ahead and take this other piece uh, the other side piece and I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down and after I've got it laid down then I We'll be able to line everything up. And that looks pretty phenomenal. And I'm going to go ahead and um, get ready because what I need to do now is I need to go and take these pieces and go press them open. Um, I guess I could do it here with it with my um, seam roller. That would work just as good, wouldn't it? Let's do that real quick. Press those open, and um, this will go pretty fast actually. Because what we're going to do now is we'll press those top and bottom pieces with the seam roller, and then we're going to add those four corner stones, and then put all four because uh, then basically it makes like three strips. You'll see what I mean. We've done this one before. I'm like 99% sure we've done this block before. Sometimes it's hard to remember month to month. <laughs> you know, got a lot going on in your life, right? Sometimes it's hard for you to remember, right? Okay. Let's do that. Okay. We're going to set this larger piece aside for just a second. And now I'm going to grab one of my corners and I'm going to flip the lo longer piece on top just so that I can double check and watch that my seam is up and I'm ready to begin. Hmm. Nope, it didn't get caught yet, so that's, I'm ready to um, let's see. That looks... Okay, I've got that one piece done. Now I can take this second piece and I'm gonna go ahead and just flip it over so that the pieced side is on top again. Looking good. Okay. Now I'll do the exact same thing on this side and I will take the second the next square and I'm just gonna flip this piece it doesn't really matter you know there's no right or wrong yet until we get ready to attach everything together there's no right or wrong so let's take a second and do that piece and it's going to go over on this side like that. Flip it from the right to the left just so that that piece side, the piece, uh, pieced piece of fabric, the pieced section is, is up. Now I will for sure take a second and go over to the iron and I'm going to iron all of these open and then we're going to come back and put the whole thing together. Let's see. Yeah, I'll be back in just a sec. I've got all my pieces 
pressed and now it's time to start assembling. So what, what you want to do is you just kind of want to get a visual layout right here. So you're going to lay the, um, with the orange piece is touching and again down here the orange piece is touching just like that. Ooh, that looks good, doesn't it? Okay, and I'm just going to scooch this bottom piece aside for just a sec and I'm going to flip my smaller piece on top of the larger piece. Now, something to note, we do have seams on the bottom. There's two seams on the bottom and there's two seams on the time on the top. So, you kind of decide which one decide which one works best for you, which one you prefer to sew on top with, and that's the one you're going to stick with. There's no seams to match. So since there's no seams to match, I mean that's it's not that's not a challenge. It's just one of those things that you just kind of have to be aware of, right? Okay, so the orange is touching, the, the darker orange is touching, the dotted orange, the marigold. Now I'm gonna rotate it around and I'll take my other piece and I'll make sure that the orange is touching the orange and I'll flip it over. And even though my the piece below it is, is there, it's not gonna get in the way or get caught in any seam allowances, so we're in a good place there. Just again, sew that straight quarter inch seam and hopefully make sure that none of my seams flip. You can kind of feel them under there. You can make sure that it flips. It looks pretty great. Okay, and now we'll go press those last two seams open and you have your chunky cross. Looking pretty great. <laughs> it's very impressive, I'm just gonna say. And here are your beautiful, beautiful chunky crosses. Well done, y'all, I'm so proud of us. We're doing great. Okay, we're gonna set those aside and we're moving on to our last block. So let's get ready for half square triangles. Okay, here is our last block for half square triangles. Um, this month, we're gonna be using four different fabrics and we're gonna be making four half square triangles from each uh, fabric. We won't be using them all this month, but we'll have them made and we'll set them aside for use, the ones that we don't need for a future block. So that'll, that's a positive that you, that you already have them made rather than having to try and do all of them at one time. Okay, so just as a refresher, not that you, aren't super, super uh, proficient at making your half square triangles, but remember, you're just gonna take your marking pen and you're gonna mark a quarter of an inch away from either side of the center line, the center diagonal line. So there's my diagonal, my, my trusty little ruler that I love so much. I'm just gonna draw. Okay, and then I have that now I'm gonna take it over to my machine. I'm gonna um, line up my fabric and I'm gonna take it over to my machine and sew exactly as best I can on top of those uh, lines and I'll cut it in half. Well, we'll do it together. I'll cut it in half when we come back. But let me go sew on top of those lines and I'll be right back. Now that I've sewn um, on, on the line, all I'm gonna do is just take my rotary cutter or scissors or whatever tool you like best and I'm just gonna cut down the center and when I press these open, I think I pressed too hard, it stuck to my cutting mat. <laughs> when I press those open, the squares will be ready for me to go ahead and trim those up uh, based on the measurements in our pattern. So grab your iron and press those seams open and trim up. This will be the last set of blocks to trim up and there are 
um, like I said, we're going to be using four fabrics um, and making uh, four of each one. Two we'll use uh, this time around and two we'll use in future blocks. So let's go do that. Okay, so as a monthly reminder, let's just talk about squaring up your half square triangles. You're going to put the diagonal of your ruler right on the line that you pressed you, that you sewed so you're going to put your ruler right on there and then you're going to go ahead and uh, trim all the way around so that you have a two and a half inch half square triangle now i know there are a lot of different ways to make half square triangles and you have to do the way that works best for you for sure definitely do that i just um this is just the way that uh, she mentions it in the book or that she talks about it in the book. And I'm trying to stay as true to her instructions as I can. So here we go. There is one of my two and a half inch half square triangles. And I have one more to go. And then, well, actually, no, I have three more sets to go. So, <laughs> but anyhow, that is a brief refresher on um, doing the half square triangle. So go. now the fun begins. Okay, so let's talk about laying out um, our blocks and how we're, we're gonna do it. So jump to page 17 in your directions and we're gonna look at the uh, right side, not the left side. I usually try to piece the right side first and then piece the left side second. So jump to the right side. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your intersection block and your stripe block and your stripe block is gonna land just to the right of that. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of lay that on top because I need a little bit more room if we're gonna lay all this out okay so then next to the intersection block is going to be our chunky cross that works like that and then we're going to bring in our um, small log cabin and then on top of that we're going to bring in the um, half square triangle with our marigold okay back down here next to our chunky cross i'm going to do the next um, small log cabin yep that's going to be next then I'm going to bring in my solid half square triangle and my yellow hexi half square triangle. That looks like that. And then all the way over here on the far right hand side, I'm going to have my gray um, and yellow uh, half square triangle. And then I have these other pieces that I need to come in and place. So let's see. I have a square that's going to go right up here next to this one that's going to piece there and then i'm going to have this square piece of background fabric that's going to go right there and then finally i'm going to have that rectangle piece that's going to come right there so that is going to be my section four so let's talk about how we're going to put all this together you know just like pieces and stuff well obviously um i'm going to look at this. I'm going to scooch this on top of this for just a second. Obviously, I'm going to flip this on top. I'm going to flip the stripes on top of the intersection block. Okay, once I've got that like that, I have to look at a couple intersections. So I've got one right there, two, three, four, five, six intersections here. Ooh, that's a lot. So that's, we're going to sew that one here, uh, the stripe block to the right of the intersection block. So that's going to come over here. Lots of seams to look at there. Okay. So I'm going to get some clips and I'm going to clip that side. Because remember how last month we talked about having clips and when you have clips, you can just kind of remember what has to go where. So I'm going to go ahead and just clip this together so that I know this side's going to go together. So I'm going to scooch that over for just a sec. Okay. Now I just want to double check my orientation. Yes, that's correct. I'm going to flip that on top. And I will clip this one. So I know this is the side that needs to be sewn. Okay. Now I'm going to, I think, hmm, yes. I think it'll be a good idea to go ahead and sew these together. I have an intersection right here to look at and an intersection right here to look at. But other than that, that's just two. Because there's more seams on this piece, I'm going to go ahead and flip my top piece down. And then I'll just clip so that I remember that this is the, the next one that I need to be looking at. Okay, now uh, definitely I can, uh, let me scooch these over so you can kind of get a better view of what I'm trying to work with here. This piece is the correct orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this up 
like that. And I'm going to go ahead and um, give this a clip because I need to sew this one right here. Okay. And these are the correct orientations. So I want to go ahead and sew these together like that, which basically just leaves two pieces out here that don't have anything attached to them yet. So let's go. I'll go sew all of these clipped ones together and then um, press all the seams open. Again, I, and I do use steam, so you know I, I like steams. So that helps me get really nice flat seams. And then um, when I come back, let's take a look at the next steps for this. Now that I've got the intersection sewn to the stripe, which I thought turned out pretty nice. I was pretty pleased. Let's take a look at the rest. Okay, I've got my chunky cross. There it is, okay, my chunky cross. And then right above that, I'm gonna have the piece that has the marigold. So that's gonna go right there, okay. That looks pretty great. Okay, now I also have my, uh, my next small log cabin. Looks good. And then I have, I think that square that goes right above. Nope, I'm missing something. There it is. <laughs> so I was like, what, that doesn't look quite right. There we go, that's correct. Okay, so I've got to put those together. And then I have my long piece all the way over here on this side. So let's kind of scooch this over so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I have three pieces there and three pieces there. No, those two pieces. So I've got my end pieces. This is sewn and this is sewn. Now I just got to get this stuff in the middle sewn together. So for me, I think the next thing, because these two pieces are already attached, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach this. So I'll clip this. And then I'm also going to sew this one. And as I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the my my half square triangle unit down on top of, to my small log cabin. And as I do, I just want to make sure that I point out that you want to be sure that you, when you're sewing, sew it this side up so that you can make sure that you're um, sinking your needle right there in that Y intersection that we've talked about every month. So that's going to be really important. So um, do that. And then I think we're getting, we're getting so much closer. So let's go do that. Okay. I've got my chunky cross unit all sewn together. That looks pretty great. Okay, now I have the um, small log cabin out of my yellows. That looks pretty good. Okay. Hmm. Yep, that looks great. Okay, now what I need to do, I think, next is to sew this unit, the bottom unit of my half square triangle uh, log cabin, onto this square. But I think I'm going to flip it up instead of flipping it down. I'm going to flip it up because I want to save that point right there. So I want to clip this so I make sure I sew the correct <laughs> the correct seam when I'm sewing. So let me grab that. Okay, I'll clip that. And then I have this piece. So I'm going to sew my intersection stripe the right side to this piece, the left. And um, I think I'm going to flip this piece the smaller piece on top. There's no, I mean, I have one or two less, more seams on this side than I do on this side. Oh, I don't know. I, the, the larger piece will be on the bottom. So I'm going to flip from the left to the right and I have several intersections. So let's look and see how many intersections that really does make. Cause that's one, two, three, four, five five intersections that are going to match up, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, five intersections. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and I'm going to clip this side so that I remember that this is the side that needs to get sewn. So I do it correctly. Okay. We're so much closer, friends. Keep it up. You got it going. All right, now I'm so excited. I got my stripes, my intersection, my chunky cross, uh, piece right here, the panel. Now I'm going to add the the next panel over, which is my log cabin piece right here. And then I have, all I have left to add is that unit. Ta-da! Pretty great. Okay, I think what I want to do um, in this particular situation is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scooch this over so that you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and um, since it's less weight, I'm going to go ahead and flip this uh, strip, my final strip over, and I'm going to go ahead and flip it and add it here. Okay, now two things to think about. Um, there's a half square triangle right there, 
and a half square triangle right there. So you could do one of two things. You could just run a whole seam all along, or you could run a seam up to this half square triangle and maybe a half inch past, and then flip over to this side, and that way you wouldn't miss that point as well. That's entirely up to you how you choose to approach this seam, but you've worked so hard to keep those points. I, you know, it's up to you, but uh, if you are confident that you feel like that would work, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop halfway and then come over here. And then, so I'll sew up like halfway at half an inch past that uh, intersection. Then I'm gonna flip over on the back. I'll sew all the way and then I'll just continuing to stitch on the line that I already stitched as I get down here um, towards the end of the of the seam because that way I can you know have a complete seam and I don't miss any of my points so that's what I think I'm gonna do once I'm done with that and I've got that sewn on then I'm just gonna come over here and I'm going once let's pretend that this whole unit is all sewn together then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna flip this yellow citron piece over on top of the um, the rest of the block because I only have one, two, three, and then a half square triangle. And I'm going to flip this over that way. When I do it on this side, I won't miss any of, I won't miss my point right there, if that makes sense. So when we come back together in just a minute, I will have completed both of those seams and we'll have one completed section four. Oh my goodness. Isn't that pretty? kind of colorful from pinks to reds to oranges. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's keep going. So what do you think? Oh my gosh. Section four is just beautiful. It's, it's just stunning. I love the color combinations. I hope you're as happy with your section, right side of section four as I am with mine. Um, just keep working at it. And uh, I think it's, I think it's gorgeous. So um, I think now it's time to grab all our pieces and uh, try and we'll do the mirror image and we'll move on to uh, laying everything out for section four, the left side. So let's do that. Okay, I've got my pieces and now I'm gonna start laying out everything, mirror images. So I'm gonna take my stripe and lay it down, looking good there. And then I'll take my intersection block and I'm gonna lay it down like that, looking good, okay. And then I have some other pieces, let's see. The, um, that's not the right side. I need the, I need the pieced, the right sides together. Okay, and then this piece goes there, yes. And this piece goes there, yes. Needs another little press. That one goes there, because that's the right way for it to go. The citron goes right there. I think so far, so far so good, right? This isn't quite as, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I enjoy putting them together, so it's kind of like a puzzle. It's kind of like a puzzle. That, that square goes there. This square is going to go right up there. And my rectangle is going to go there. Okay, so your job now is to take the same time. Don't, don't rush yourself. And let's go ahead and get this all pieced together so that we have the left side. Because after that, we're going to sit back and admire our beautiful work. You got this. Keep going. You got it. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh, we have the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So this is um, section four, and now that section four is complete, it is time to attach it to section three. So I'm gonna go ahead and go grab my section three off of my design wall, and I'm gonna do the right side first, and then I'll do the left side. So let me go grab that, and we'll um, look at how we're gonna piece that together. This is section three and right of the right side, and right below it is section four. So what I'm gonna do is I will just kind of piece, lay them together just so that we can kind of study it together and say, okay, what do we need to be aware of as we're getting ready to um, attach these two pieces together and which piece is gonna get on top of which. So um, I don't see anything that we have to worry about with the hang pin, uh, nothing, nothing there. All I just see are intersections. So there's one intersection, don't want to miss that point. One intersection, don't want to miss that point. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, six more intersections. So I feel like I could go ahead and take my smaller piece and flip it over. Let me just think about that for a second. I think that would be okay. What I think I'll do is I will sew, I'll come up, uh, no, we're going to start at this side, right? So I'll sew here and I will come all the way just a little bit past this um, intersection right here and I'll stop so that I can turn it over and then sew from this side and go this way and overlap in between just to be sure that I, you know, have a good solid seam there. But yeah, I think that's going to work. So let's go do that. We're going to do that with our left side and we're going to do that with our right side. And when we come back, we should have two complete left and right sides. Sound good? Let's make this happen. We can do this. Here is the right side with section three and four sewn together. This is the section that we just completed and this is the section from last month. And so, um, as you can see, my, my, my table space is not really large enough to accommodate all of it. There's still more coming down. But as you can see, it is, um, it, it's really, really beautiful. So this is section three and four on the right side, because as it's coming down here, this is the, um, this is where right here, where we're going to add the body, uh, the, the butterfly body is right in here. So, wow, that looks really good. I'm, I'm very pleased. So, um, there we go. That's section three and four. Let me go do the left hand side, uh, so that I'm ready. And then we can work on attaching parts one and two to parts three and four. Okay, so here is my assembled left-hand side of the wing. It is, you can see right here, this is the line. This was section three and this was section four that we just got com done completing. So now I've got it all sewed together and now I'm interested in attaching it to the piece one and two. So let me grab that. It's right here. And I'm going to kind of fold this up a little bit so that you can see where it all attaches. Okay, and you can see that it attaches. This is the upper left hand. This, this part right here is the upper. Let me scooch this over. This is the upper left hand piece of the, of the wing. Uh, and then we're going to start attaching them right here, coming down the center part right here. And um, the good news is that we really um, don't have any, we have no hang pin we need to worry about because if we take this, if we take piece one and two and fold it over onto piece three and four, we'll um, save that point right there. And then we have, we have one intersection right here, a point, an intersection right here, an intersection right here, and then as we come up, we have those, the teeny log cabins, the tiny log cabins. We have a section there, an intersection here, and an intersection here. So it is not, it is not going to be, um, I don't think it'll be that challenging to put the whole like section one and two over here together with section three and four. I feel like we'll be fine. Uh, now you do you, but I am going to definitely fold uh, or just lay section right sides together, section one and two over on top of section three and four. And then I feel like that will um, be sufficient. I, I think this is going to just be gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to do it on the left hand side and then I'm going to do it on the right hand side. Okay, so take your time, match your seams, watch out for that point right there. We can do this. I have confidence. Let's go. Let's get after it. <laughs> okay, I've got the whole thing pinned, and then I put this yellow pin in here because that's kind of a caution to me because the whole side all the way over um, from the far side here, everything's pinned and ready to go, but I need to stop here because guess what? <laughs> On the other side is a half square triangle. And I don't want to miss that point. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here where the yellow pin is. Then I'll flip my quilt over and I'll stitch from this side to finish so that I can save that point. So that yellow there is just kind of a caution to me to stop. And uh, you can see I've got a lot of seams down here that I don't want to flip. So I'm going to really need to go slow and take my time and make sure that uh, it looks 
as beautiful um, as I want it to be. So take your time and you got this. So, so here we are with the left side of the butterfly wing sections one, two, three, and four completely sewn together. That looks fabulous. Okay, left side's done. Let's go hit the right side. We can do this. And there is the beautiful right-hand side of our Tula Pink Butterfly Quilt. Isn't it gorgeous? I bet yours is just stunning too. Okay, we did it. We did the left, we did the right. We've put it all together, sections one, two, three, four. I think it's pretty awesome. I'm very proud of us. And yes, we're done. Sections one, two have been attached to sections three and four. I couldn't be more pleased and I hope you are too. Um, if you have any questions about the construction or anything about how things are going, um, leave them down in the comments below. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with, anything that you need. Um, this has been a lot of fun and next month is month five and can you believe it? Month five will be halfway done. Oh my gosh. So proud of you. I hope you had a good time and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye.